Hello and welcome to Talking Live. I'm Dr. Robbie Ludwig right here in Starshop Studio in Times Square. And we are so lucky to have Emma Forbes, who is a British TV presenter and radio host, one of the most recognizable faces in England. Fortunately, she has moved over here, so we will hear a little bit about her story. And she also comes from not Hollywood, showbiz royalty. Some English show, yeah. I yes, guess so. your mother's an actress. Yes, my mother's an actress. My father was an actor, writer, producer, director, film director in the British, and ran Pinewood and Elstree Studios, the big studios in England for a while. What was that like? Did you ever want to be an actress? It's so funny. I, I get asked that a lot. I think I did. I did sort of momentarily. I had a few bit parts in his mm -hmm. movies. I have a walk-on part in the first Stepford Wives, that he did the first Stepford Wives movie. And I had a little walk-on part in that. But then I think I just felt like I wanted to do something that was my own, but in the entertainment yeah. industry. So presenting was kind of not acting, but it was you know, in the same sort of field. I always say when I took um, acting classes and I did not do very well and I hated it, I wanted to be out there, but I wanted to be me. And as an actress or an actor, you. No. you can't be you. No, and, and that's what I like doing. I liked being me rather than trying, I wasn't very good at acting in a role, so that's I'm sure like you were, and you look exactly like your mother. I, you know, when you interview someone, you kind of stalk their Instagram. <laughs> and so I feel like I know so much about your life, which is so happy and pretty looking, but you showed off your mother recently I did. with oh, I, no plastic surgery, no. and she's gorgeous. She's 85, because <gasps> I know, because you know, you and I have met over your book and everything. Yes. I mean, and she is, I mean, I know she's my mother, so I'm biased, but honestly, we're so used to plastic surgery and everything yes. these days, that yes. actually to see somebody that has aged naturally is pretty amazing because she's 85 she honestly doesn't mm. she she looks 65. no she does and she's incredible like that and and i was very lucky in that my dad who was also a sort of photographer in his spare time photographed every second of their life there wasn't a day I, i'm so lucky to have this incredible archive of photographs what a somewhere. beautiful love story your parents had oh they were an amazing love story they met yeah. her she was 17 and they were married for 58 years and it was incredible. And do you think that helped you to choose well for yourself? Because you also have a beautiful love story. I, I do, and I think it's sort of funny in a way, because I remember when I got married, I was 22, and I remember on my wedding day, a girlfriend saying to me, this is really grown up, you getting married. And I thought, well, it didn't enter my mind, because my mother got married at sort of 17, so yeah. I thought 22, well, you know. You were over I'm, the hill. Yeah, 22. I was like slightly getting too old to get married. Now, was it college that you got? No, like, no. We, we met, we met post-college, okay. but I was his roommate for a year and a half. Wow. And I was always trying to find him the perfect girlfriend. <laughs> then, and really? then things changed. And, yes. Yeah. And it's been 32 years, so that's kind of... And part of your world in England is you also interfaced with the royal family. We did. Well, basically because my dad was, you know, he, he ran Pinewood Studios, but he made a lot of the big British films. Mm. And and the Queen Mother and the royal family were very interested in, in, in that world. And so my dad used to get them to come on the film set and have lunch at Pinewood Studios and come and watch the filming for the day. Can you imagine for the actors, you're sitting there with like the Queen Mother. It must be like, intimidating. I never really think. thought about it at the time, but I was thinking about it the other day thinking for the actors, that must have been yeah. like terrifying. Yeah. But anyway, they used to come and as a result, and my dad was a big letter writer. I mean, people mm. do emails now and stuff like that, but he was a big letter writer and he had this amazing sort of letter writing with like Princess Margaret and Prince Charles and, and so as a result I grew up very much um, playing with um, Princess Margaret's children David Lindley and Sarah Armstrong Jones and we used to go for Sunday lunch at Windsor Castle and and have lunch with the Queen and stuff like that. What, so, yeah. What's the Queen like? Do you know they're, they're sort of they're an amazing family and it's not just because I'm British they are amazing yeah. and I think that we're very lucky to have them but they have this incredible humor. You often don't, you know, everybody else really only sees the very regal side, yeah. the very, but, but I remember Sunday lunches and, and I was young. So you've got to remember that I just saw it through a child's eyes. Yeah. We would really laugh. They used to tell a lot of jokes, like naughty jokes. And we'd go around the table telling jokes and there was a lot of playing and laughter and dogs and, and chaos. And I loved that. It mm. wasn't like, I've heard that, formal. that the Queen is very yeah. funny and that Prince Charles, Prince Charles is very crazy. charming. He's super charming and actually if you ever see little cutaway shots of yeah. him on visits with Camilla, 
they laugh a lot. Yeah. They have an amazing laughter relationship. And Harry has a wicked sense of humor. There's, you know, you see it in in the royals and you see like Prince George is always laugh. He, he's the cheeky mm -hmm. one of those ones. So I think there's a sort of a gene of humor that yes. runs through all of them. Well, I think they would need it because even oh, yeah. though it looks so glamorous to be a part of the royal family, it oh. must be very difficult. And I think that's something you can really only understand as you get older. I think so. And I think it's, well, I mean, you know, what little girl doesn't want to, you right. know, Listen, grow up? I bought those be, crowns. I mean, I was desperate. You and I both want to wear those. <laughs> I mean, you, you grow right. up and you're like, yes. I want to be a princess. Want, yes. But I think Princess Diana was the first time we sort of really saw the, the, the downside, if you like. Of, mm. of marrying into royalty and it's a job you know it ultimately it's a job and it's a job with huge responsibility your every move is looked at mm -hmm. and that's why I've I've been really on Meghan Markle's side from the beginning I know and I do want to get and we do have a picture yes. of Kate yeah uh, Princess Diana not this one and uh, Meghan Markle right yeah. here because there's been a lot of stories in the press about Kate. I'm a huge fan of Kate. So am I. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know how What's you don't make any. I mean, I mean, she doesn't make any mistakes. No. no and no, no, she no. looks so happy and healthy yeah. and like not a care in the world. It's really incredible. Yeah. And very hard to do. Meghan Markle has not been that lucky. No. Um, and no. Princess Diana, I just admired my whole entire life. I, I know. Mean, well, I, she was sort of. She was iconic in so many ways because she, you know, she kind of rocked the royal family with mm -hmm. the way she was and the mother that she was. She was a hugely hands-on mother. I actually met her because I, at that particular time, I was working in children's TV, and there's a there's a very famous children's hospital in England called Great Ormond Street, and she was one of the patrons, and I was sort of involved in that hospital too. And she had an extraordinary way about her, and I'd heard all about it. And you know, you read about it, but I had to go to this event at the hospital. And I remember I went in and she came in and it was a private event, it wasn't publicized. And she came in and she sat on the floor. And she put her handbag down on the floor and, and children just flocked to her. Mm. And she let all these kids go in her handbag. There was one brushing her hair, one using her lipstick. Wow. She had an amazing aura about her. She was incredibly special in so many ways and I think she brought a sort of Hollywood glamour to it the way yeah. she wore fashion do you remember she famously wore like one of the royal watches but she wore it as a headband I you mean know? my wedding dress was inspired oh. by hers so I mean was clearly mine. it was a little different but I know so it was yeah. it was a bit of a rangy, but you know what it was fine. but she was sort of amazing and I think Megan this is early days for Megan, and that's why I slightly mm. feel like we need to give her a break because she's just finding her feet. Yeah, you know, she's she's just had a baby. That's not easy for anybody. Yeah, let alone. I wonder if she has postpartum life. depression too. Well, because yeah. in looking at her post baby, and that's quite normal. You know, and hormonally so normal. and just and like everybody was like, you know, two weeks after the baby, yeah. she's not out and about and doing things. I mean, I don't know, I, I didn't leave the house for six weeks when I'd had a baby. I was in such a daze of kind of, what yeah. am I gonna do, an overwhelming responsibility. I think she's trying to keep everything private. And in England, that's caused backlash because actually everybody's like, no, we want pictures out on the steps of the hospital two hours later, and Kate did do that. Yes. But then Kate was very ill in pregnancies but very lucky in giving birth. She always gave birth super fast and came out of the hospital three hours later looking better than I did 15 years after having children. She was amazing like that, but not everybody's like that. Yeah, I mean, it's so, it's so interesting. I want to just get back before we get yeah. into the comparisons because I don't necessarily think that Meghan is like Princess Diana, but listen, I respect... Not like her. I just mean she's... No, she's not like her. What I mean is she has... That kind of, she's different. So her yes. style is different. Mm -hmm. What I meant, she's not like her personality wise. Okay. What I meant was she's got that kind of Hollywood touch to her. Like she does Diana have a charisma. With the fact, you know, Kate yes. is much more, I guess I would describe Kate as the, is the perfect princess. Kate is like the perfect She's going to be the perfect be, queen. She'll be the perfect queen. She she gets it right. Yeah. She's always on form. She's yes. got a great smile, a great, you know, everything. And she's, yes. she's incredible with people. And I just mean that in terms of Meghan, she's got to find her way. And mm -hmm. Princess Diana sometimes flummoxed finding her way on things because she too was quite private. 
and wanted to be a hands-on mom mm. and wanted to have a bit of privacy. That's what I meant. Not so much like the comparison to them both, you know, in that way. Yeah, I, I guess what I was thinking is that their essence is different, but you're right. I mean, she is trying to get used to this new job. Yeah. And I don't know if Americans really understand this, because I think for Americans, we blur royalty with celebrity. Yeah. We yeah, do more. Do. Yeah. And unless you've met, and I've been fortunate through the show to yeah. meet you know, royalty who basically explained to me that they have a job, yeah. you know, to be charitable and yes. to think about giving back to the community. And it's a yeah. different mentality. It's very different. Yeah. And, and it, as I said to you at the beginning, it is a job and it is different. And, and they have to pick the right charity that they're going to really be at the forefront of mm -hmm. and and commit to that and there are certain functions that they have to be at and they have to show face at and traditions and things like that so it, it is very different to being a celebrity what do you think the feeling is towards Meghan Markle in the UK versus the United States I think in the UK and I was just back there recently I think her you know, she was so loved leading up to the wedding and, every, and the wedding day was so picture perfect. And I think it was such an amazing moment on so many fronts, that wedding. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it was incredible. And Prince Charles taking her mother's arm down the aisle. Yeah. Was a moment oh, in history. Oh, I thought he really, he it was, really did shine. He shone. During yeah. that moment. And I think it was incredible. Yes. And I think the problem is with, you know, us British are very, very patriotic. So mm. everybody with the royal baby, when it comes to moments like that, older generations, I think the younger generations kind of understood where she was, but the older generations, you know, people have street parties, they want the baby to come out, they're waving flags, and she sort of didn't tick those boxes. And I, I felt bad for her, because I was like, somebody needs to say to her, you've got to do those things. Do, don't you think someone did, and she decided she not to? See, I think she has advisors, but she's rebellious. I think she's trying to make her mark, yeah. literally. I think Megan's trying to make her mark, and the problem is, as I said, it's a job where I'm not sure you can really always do that. Yeah. It's not a job where you've got total say on that. And celebrity is fun when you're being celebrated, but it's not fun no. when they're looking to make you look bad no, or not stupid at all. or hated. No, exactly. You and know? I think she said that at the Lion King premiere. They kind of, she, I think she said it was to somebody, not to be honest, but somebody she was sort of mouth saying, you know, I'm really struggling with the British press. Yeah. And I think she is because at the moment, because also. It is very typical of British press to kind of put somebody up here and then really beat them down. Yeah, that's and American it, press too. Yeah, it's in press everywhere. <laughs> it's isn't it? But at press. the moment, they're basically kind of. And it's not fun. It's fun to ride high. It's it not is fun not that, fun to it's be not brought down. It's not fun in that now. bit where every single thing you do is it's horrible. Is kind of, it's horrible. And it's I like Mean and, Girls. And it's like Mean Girls. And also, yeah. don't let's forget your kind of six weeks hormonal post a baby. Yeah. You care. Like, True. You, know, you know, you're very emotionally vulnerable at that point. What is the relationship between Kate and Meghan? We've heard a lot of, you know, news in the press that they don't get along, I know. that it's the brothers, I and know. they're very different. You see, I, I do think that that is like tittle-tattle. I mm -hmm. think that is just hearsay, because okay. actually they were together at Wimbledon, they were photographed laughing and smiling. I actually think Kate has really been trying to help Meghan mm. and really help her on her way. And I think particularly in the beginning, she was super helpful. They're hugely different. And it's like when when two fat like, you know, when you marry somebody, you know, you don't have to be best friends with your sister in law. Right. You know, everybody's like, well, they need to be like best friends and they need to hang out together and they need to do they probably aren't best friends. They come from hugely different worlds. Yeah. They probably don't have a massive amount in common, other than the fact they're both in the royal family. And when you see them at public occasions, I don't particularly pick up that they don't get on. Yeah. I mean, they no, always seem to be. I don't think you would with Kate anyway. No. I, I don't think, think she's you. Too, I mean, she's too sort of. Yeah. She's, she's too, too proper. Cool she's yeah. really, she could be an actress. She yeah, is she very is. good at putting on the right face. At The Lion King, yes. there was a lot of press making a lot of noise about Beyonce and how Beyonce held court. 
yeah. um, and Megan didn't do the right thing. I actually had a very different feeling, but I'm curious about your feeling. I, I didn't feel that. I, I, I didn't either. I don't know about you, but I didn't feel that. I saw all of that and I was just like, I thought it was... I thought, I thought Megan was very warm in I hugging Beyonce and there was news that um, Beyonce was actually nervous because there's so much protocol when you meet the royal yeah. family that she was overwhelmed at where I could I could totally see that. I could totally see that yeah. too. That, I, I'm with you. I, okay. I felt exactly the same way with that. You mentioned that the Queen has been really great in terms of, and she is very well loved. We know She's this. super well loved and you've got to remember her age. And for that age group, you know, the, the changes that she has seen in the whole... It's so progressive. Is She's super progressive. So progressive. And I think sometimes, you know, I know she can look stern and not always smiley in a minute, but she's super progressive. Yeah. You know, she's been photographed with, you know, Donald Trump smiling and welcoming yeah. him into the... You know, and that, you've got to think of the Queen kind of going, okay, this is, you know, this is somebody that was on TV. This is somebody... You know, she's very progressive. She, yeah. I think she accepts a huge amount. She was very progressive when Princess Diana died because she had mm. to be. She had to change all of royal protocol for that because mm. she had to bow to the British public's yeah. wants and needs. She's been amazing over Meghan and Harry marrying. And, and the first biracial great-grandchild, yes. which is incredible. It is incredible. And I, I think, you know, I'm. it's not just because I'm patriotic. I think for that generation to be that... I agree you know, welcoming and progressive is pretty incredible. She has someone who has done her job well from the beginning. Yeah. You know, she really has. Yeah. And also I like the fact that she doesn't have the plastic surgery and, and doesn't well, it seem... Even, it's, not, it's not a sort of prevalent It's there, not? Either. Oh. I mean, the thought of the Queen going for her kind of <laughs> monthly fillers would be... They don't do that? Don't you think Princess Diana would have done that, though? I don't know if really? Princess... I guess oh. we... We'll never know. We'll never that. know. Because I don't think it wasn't even around when Princess right, Diana was true. there. And you just, I don't know, is the answer. Yeah. I like to think she wouldn't. I can't imagine the Queen suddenly going, you know what, I'm getting on a bit. I'll just go and have the odd little nip and tuck. <laughs> I uh, want to turn it back 10 years. Then right? You never know. You never know. Watch this space. So I want to ask you, as we switch into and we get ready for the quick five, okay. you moved over here. You had a huge career. I mean, like basically Emma is photographed in her bathing suit and they're like, doesn't she look fabulous well, in her bathing suit? No. Me, no, but I, I did, I moved here. I basically moved here because my kids both, I've got one on each coast. So I've got a daughter that's just graduated on the East Coast. I've got my son entering his third year at university on the uh -huh. West Coast. And my, we've always loved America and we've always come over here. And I kind of thought maybe at 54, and you'll get this, this is the time yeah. to just embrace a different moment in life. Well, we're just, so glad you did. So I'm kind of loving it. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving coming over here and doing things like this and sort of trying to reinvent myself here. And so here you are contributing and, and giving royal commentary. Yes, on yeah. Well, I can all, give a bit of insider. Yes, also. yes. And you have insider. And you know Fergie, but that's a and different story. You'll have to come back. I with Fergie. I like Fergie. I love Fergie. Fergie's yeah. adorable. She was my head girl at school. She's a nice, she seems like a nice girl. Heart of I, gold. I pull for her. Heart of gold. Let's go with the quick five. Okay, I'm so ready. people can get to know you here. Because oh if okay. they know you, they're going to love you. Okay. And that's just I'm the way it's going to be. Okay. Yes. What are you absolutely determined to do? Oh, okay. Well, I'm determined to succeed in America. That's yeah. one thing. Well, that's a okay, given. I'm also determined will. to be not be an empty nester mother and embarrassing and things like that. I am determined to be a cool, uh -huh. independent woman in phase two of my mm -hmm. life. Well, you will. Okay. I have no doubt. Mm -hmm. What takes up too much of your time? Probably Instagram. <laughs> I know. I mean, like, I know. I don't what, want to be that person, but I so am. I it am. It takes too. up a huge amount of time. I know. Also, because I'm not that technical. So, like, that whole aging app, it took me like five days before I even figured out how you could even do anything. Like Listen, that. I'm triumphant just by scrolling. I'm like, so oh, wow, I'm so fabulous. I can so scroll. It probably takes up way too much of my time doing technical <laughs> social media type yes, things. Yes. Yes. What are some small things that make your day better? Ooh, well. Things that make my day better are things like, 
yoga. Mm -hmm. I've discovered restorative yoga. That makes my day a lot better on days. You'll have to invite me. I'll go with you. See how I just invited myself with you? Um, I would love that. You have an open invitation. (laughs) I love finding the latest kind of little health foodie places in New York. Mm -hmm. That always makes my day better. Finding the latest kind of smoothie, plant protein type of place. What else makes my day better? Hmm. Your just new puppy? Just something that my new puppy yeah. makes my day. How can I forget my new puppy? Your new, I'll remember for you because I have dog cravings and no dog. Hudson is making my day better, but I, he will make my day even better when he learns how to pee on a pavement. <laughs> I'm crossing my fingers for you. Yeah. What's the best thing you got from your parents? My, the best thing I got from my parents was the ability to like pick myself up, dust myself off, mm. and start all over again. They planted me with an amazing work ethic. And I think because of the industry that they were in, I saw the highs and mm. I saw the lows. And I saw how quickly the highs can happen and I saw how fast the lows can happen. And they also always taught me to always be nice to everybody on the way up because mm. on the way down. So true. And do you notice those you people who are not nice? Not a good not scenario. A good yeah. So I love Smart parents. Somewhere. Yeah. You were very lucky. What's the title of the current chapter of your life? Oh, that's a very, oh, I love that question. Thank you. You can have it. It's such a good one. The current title would be, Here I Come. I love that. (laughs) And here you are, and right on Talking Live. And I want to let everybody know that you also have a podcast. I do. I have a podcast called Gemma and Emma. It's on iTunes and SoundCloud, and it's on all the Global British Airways flights. And your lovely self is on one. I was so fortunate to be on, and it, it, um, 16 million people worldwide listen to it. We will have a link so people can find you. Because once they find you, they're going to want to follow you. We interview inspiring people, of which you were one. And and, and it's so lovely. It's lovely. It was honored. It was great. And it's um, a great podcast. So we'll encourage everybody to sign up so they can hear you. Thank you. Thank Thank you so much for joining us on Talking Live, and we will see you soon.